both of us were very trusting at the beginning. We thought these medical people... Which was, yeah, so shocking when I took the antidepressant and it made yeah. me feel worse than Yeah, I, I mean, I was there at the beginning when Anna was given the antidepressant and then the antipsychotic and quite frankly, I've never seen anything so awful in my life that that she was getting so really bad experiences like I think they call it apathesia like restlessness under the skin and um, and then zombified by the antipsychotic so she could hardly speak I'd had an incident that happened when I before I ever went into hospital it was a suicide attempt that I believe myself was brought on by the medication and I've been told that there is such a thing called iatrogenic effects from medications which is what I think I suffered from. I had a bad reaction to the medication and it just, I felt compelled to do something about it, which meant taking my own life. They'd never told her or me what kind of reactions or symptoms you can get from these medications. They didn't tell us that. And it's left me traumatised because that whole situation has left me feeling like, what was that? I mean... Mm. I don't know what to say. I'm like a loss for words with it all, really, when it comes to that. You know, the, the treatment is uh, all about symptoms and all about medication mm. and um, not about the person. Yeah. You know, what, what is happening for you now? What do you want to talk about? Um, and as for me, I mean, I, as usual, when it's treatment as usual, I'm always left out anyway. Primarily the aim is to give family members a voice because as a family therapist I really felt family voices still weren't being heard. The thing about um, being a carer or a family member is um, there isn't, there wasn't any support for us. And I know that there's a lot of anger from family members. You meet carers, you meet family members who get ill themselves, really get ill, exhausted. And I thought if we can somehow capture this anger, because it's very hard for professionals to hear the anger, so the anger just increases, can become quite harmful, I guess. Not only were the people in our family harmed, but we ourselves are harmed and that wasn't being recognised either. And some people that I've met personally have lost their son, sons and daughters to either um, death, early death, or um, in the system forever and never being able to get out of it. Tom would be admitted to hospital put on large doses of antipsychotics, which he always said he didn't want to take and which didn't help him, and then he would disengage and came off all the drugs. He said he didn't want to live like that, he didn't want to be a zombie, he didn't want to be numb. Tom ended his life a few years ago, and we are still trying to come to terms with our huge loss. And I firmly believe that if we had been offered the open dialogue approach at the start, Tom may well be here today. So I thought if we can turn this into a passion uh, in a way that others can hear them, rather than it just being a support group, I, I wanted them to be activists. It's a, it's a kind of mission to, for change. It's become a core group of m mothers, basically, at the moment. And we are doing trying to be activists, trying to do things that spread the word, have conferences, do webinars. Zip, 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 zap, zap. Can I boing a zap? No. <laughs> you can zip a zap or zap a zip, but you can't boing a zap. You can only boing a zip. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Okay. So we've got something going with Queen Mary University, which has been wonderful. It's on their, I think it's creative media and mental health course. Very shy.
<laughs> so we had a wonderful workshop together. If somebody talks about wanting to harm themselves, they can offer them an appointment in four months' time, which leads to staff being overburdened. And yeah. is there a lot of people quitting? Or? Yeah, people do leave, yeah. And because people experiencing mental health distress don't get um, a response that they need, issues that brought them into services never are, are never talked about fully, they're never addressed fully. We call it revolving door, but then there'll be something else happens in their life and so they come back again. We were exploring different stories, personal stories, and the students were sort of helping us uh, develop it in a creative way. To get across a story can be very profound in, in how other people see what you're trying to get across. Darling Mummy, I love you very much, but unfortunately your compulsive helping and codependency is not helping and I don't want to see you again until further notice. I feel that my recovery has been compromised by our codependent relationship and that hopefully by asking for this separation we are setting boundaries and you will be able to let go of some of the controlling elements that have hung over our relationship in both realising where we may have damaged each other. Perhaps this separation will allow me to take back responsibilities for my life. I don't know how long this separation will last, but believe me, I want to tell you again that I love you very much. And it's, it's hard for them to tell their story. It's hard to hear. When I first heard some family members' stories and truly listened to their pain, that's really, uh, was so emotional. And it still is, you know, hearing their stories. We, we want as many people who'd like to join in and tell their stories, because that, that's what it's all about. If you're going to change, a, change a, a sort of system, if you like, you need a lot of people all talking about it. The students there call them the champions, and I quite like that. I think we might drop the open dialogue and just call them the champions, because that's what they are to me. I read about the Open Dialogue approach in Northern Finland and felt this way of working would help our family and many others. Many of the key principles are common sense, but are simply not happening in many of our services at the moment. And the skill is in actually saying you've got expertise in knowing much more about your child and what's been happening. I've got expertise in actually helping us explore that and I have knowledge of what's available. It still amazes me how many people say, even in a first network meeting, how they never discuss the issues that is holding them back in their lives. And for me, the best outcome for anyone is hearing from services and family themselves how Open Dialogue has helped them and made a difference to their lives, how they've been able to move on I think it just helps to process um, what's going on for us in our minds and um, then, you know, it can help our mental health to understand how, why we're thinking the way we are, why we're, we're at, reacting to things the way we are, really. And it's all helped me learn how to um, manage my emotions a bit better and... Um, yeah, I just think that is the benefit of talking for me. I think that's what's important, is it's about that uh, ability to find um, a voice in yourself that's expressing something that you may never have expressed before and it comes out and it's heard, it's heard by somebody else. And uh, that gives it some kind of validity if we had had a dialogue first or an open dialogue team working with us right at the beginning probably would have got resolved without going on into treatment as usual for years and years as it had to. 
I think that it is coming out more. I'm noticing they're talking a lot more about mental health everywhere. Different things and therapy seems to be something that is spoken a lot more about now. And... I'm not going to be able to change the world. <laughs> but I do want people to understand this system we have at the minute, this psychiatric system, is harmful. It's not helpful, it's harmful. So we need a much more community-based, a more compassionate way of working for people. Open dialogue is a gift for carers. It gives me more hope, I think. Like, as it gives me a feeling that I can come off the medication, that I'm not I'm not going to be like this all my life, you know, necessarily. It's not always the case. And, and yeah.